The design process for the monocot starts quite early in the season uh, for the subsequent year's car. So for example, we're about to start some work on the one that we're going to be using in 2015, we hope. And that is already starting in the aerodynamics world and in structures as well, the stress department. And uh, they look a lot at how stiff they can make things for what efficiency. And we try and make sure that we can please as many of the sub-departments as we can whilst trying to make it as light as we can. And that's the key challenge for Lewis's team, to keep the monocoque's weight down whilst making it strong enough to guarantee driver safety. Primarily the monocoque affects performance in uh, the mass of the car really, it's the fundamental first one I suppose. It does mean that you need to try and make sure that every other aspect of the design is fulfilled which is the difficult part I suppose, to make sure that you can make it light and do all the other things it has to do. That's why we have good materials development every year to try and make sure we're using the best we can from our suppliers and making sure that we do R&D wherever we can during the season as well. Whilst the key to keeping the weight down is carbon fibre, from a manufacturing point of view, that's no easy option and is the start of an immensely complicated and time-consuming process. The monocoque is almost entirely made out of carbon fibre with some other aspects that are called core components, if you like, and inserts, but it's basically an entirely composite construction. It's laminated into a female mould in multiple pieces and then assembled through quite a few stages over quite a few weeks. It's quite a big job for everybody involved in the whole company. The manufacturing process is a number of stages, at least three, depending on how you make it and in which team you're at, but um, there's at least three or four major cure stages in the monocoque construction, some of which take some weeks each. So they're quite, it's a very labour intensive process to actually make them. And because of that, we can't afford to have any scrap, for example. So we need to make sure that the design aspects are as good as they can be before we start. Moulding going on over here, pieces of pattern block, which is the blue stuff, is used to make uh, tool surfaces that are then laminated onto to make moulds, which are then typically used to make the components themselves. So that'll be cooked in the autoclave. This kind of surface finish is what you get once you've finished doing what that chap's doing there, and it's all cooked. And the final part of the operation, testing, testing, testing. After all, a driver's life could be on the line. If he has a big crash and bits fall off the car, which they're basically designed to do, then that aspect of the car should remain intact. That's the main part of the car that does a lot of the safety testing. So there's an awful lot of tests that go on, on that vehicle to make sure that nothing gets through it, basically, if you like, and nothing can really fundamentally break it. It's a pretty vital part of the car. It's the backbone of the car. In terms of surprises, we wouldn't expect. We obviously don't like those because they can either be expensive or dangerous or both. So we try and avoid them wherever we can. I don't think we've had any particularly bad ones the last couple of years. So. I think again as the procedures become more and more robust they'll become less and less.